But Wendy, when you hear her, you almost have to put your arm around her. Yes. And you can't even be mad at her when she starts talking. Because when she starts talking, she forgets that she's living in this thing called life too. Because I believe she was the one saying things in reference to being in an open relationship and there's no way and it's terrible and I couldn't. But if I'm not mistaken, then maybe I'm wrong. They said there's a new baby on the way and it ain't by her. Baby, that's what they're saying. But, you know, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. <clears throat> but what happens is when you're living in life and you seem to enjoy taking shots at people when you think they're at their lowest point. Come on. Somehow those things get turned around. When you see a person's eyes get bigger than they normally seem to be, ever so respectfully. And then they black out and mm. fall down. This is not shade. This is not laughing. Because again, we I'm 965 years old. Can't be drawing shade it's and all honesty. of that. But you got to say these things begin to wear down on people. So these this is what can happen when the rumors that are put out you on you are not true. But also when you are too fearful to, to say what is true, despite the fact that it's not the most popular thing to say. Hey, how y'all doing? What's going on, Potty Crashers? Girl, I got some tea for you guys. So, Monique, I got her whole video. Guess what? I'm just going to put the whole video up, okay? It's, it is it is long. It's like 30, 40 minutes, girl. So, basically, she addressed Whoopi Goldberg, her calling her to help. And she confirmed she's still to help. She talks about Steve Harvey. Yes, and she clears all the rumors up about the slap. And she talks about Wendy Williams. And she, and uh, Sydney talks about William, Wendy Williams, too. And uh, almost was like, Wendy, you know, I guess you get what you sow because you talked about people so bad. Look at your situation. And, and we hear that you're in an open relationship and he having a baby on you. It was a mess. So I'm going to leave it up to you guys to judge. Oh, follow me. Subscribe to Gossip Girl XOXO. You know you love me. Hello, my loves. Hello, my loves. Daddy, we getting it. Get it. Okay. <laughs> y'all, only if y'all understood. Okay, when it comes to this technology, this ain't what we do. But we, we working our way through it. We worked it. So, hey, everybody. Hey, hey. Welcome to Monique and Sydney's Open Relationship. How's everybody doing? Right, right, right. Hey, Daddy. Hey, Mama. How you doing? Super fantastic. Fantastic and super. So, what are we talking about today? Tell them. Today, we are talking about what do you do when the rumors are about you? Bang. What do you do when the rumors are about you? Now, y'all, listen. These are new glasses, okay? So I can't see a damn thing. So, Daddy, I'm, <laughs> I'm going to need you to help me. Hey, we're going to okay? work together. If there's any question or anything, okay, right. So what do you do when the rumors about you? Because y'all know, I'm going to go right into it, Daddy. Go. Okay. So y'all know, was it Monday? It was before even Monday. When I was in L.A. last weekend, I went on my brother's show, The Steve Harvey Show. Now, Steve Harvey and I have been knowing each other for 25 plus years. Y'all gonna just start calling right now already? Okay. Hey, this is Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you calling from? What's going on? It's Mo Duncan again. We got from Port Mississippi. What's up, Mo and Sydney? Hey, baby. What's happening? How you doing, man? I uh, wanted to first and foremost congratulate you on your success out there in Vegas. Hope you hit that uh, coming episode from Cafe. Baby, thank you so much. You know we've been there. Oh, for real? Yes. I, I used to stay over there on the west side on Charleston. Wow, we, so, we actually met Tim and his beautiful wife, Janet. You know what? And also, if you get a chance, check out Mario's Catfish on, uh, I know you don't want to gain no weight, but still. Check out Mario's Catfish on uh, Lake Me and Martin Luther King. Let me tell y'all why I love Monique and Sydney's open relationship. Because what talk show have y'all ever been on, heard, watched, where a caller came in and they said, you know, you got to check out Eminem Soul Food and then you got to go to Marlo. This before we even talking about shit, y'all. Bang. That's what I love about us. Now talk to me, baby. 
Hey, man, I uh, know y'all was talking about the Roman situation. Um, look, man, when it's all said and done, right now we're at a, a state, of, state of time where people have become very uh, Protestant, where, you know what I'm saying, they just want to watch the person burn, and they burn hanging, they just sitting there uh, just laughing at it. And a lot of times people are afraid to be their own selves because they don't want to see themselves, you know, be treated like a witch and burn at the stake. But the thing is, somebody like you, once again, you have the balls to walk through that, through that fire and, you know, came out of hands, regardless you depended on your talent and you had your great man to back you up. So now you're seeing everybody starting to try to kiss your ass now, all of a sudden, because the point of the matter was you still stood on what you stood on. Those are morals. You, you know, baby, and I appreciate that. And it's, <clears throat> I don't think that it's people trying to kiss my ass. I think it just took some time for some of us to understand what was going on. Well, from where folks is from. I apologize. No, 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 no. <laughs> don't. Don't apologize because you kicking it from a place of this is what they say on the streets. Right. This, this is how folks communicate and we know what it is, but we appreciate you saying it so real. We love you, baby. Hey, one more thing, Monique. Come on. I had to hit you up last time, and I was like, man, you need to come uh, check, uh, check out the Judge Joe Brown podcast show. We would love to have you and see me on there. I, I sent you uh, the info on DM on uh, Instagram, but I still ain't get a word, baby. Well, so listen, up, let me tell you why you ain't getting no word with the DM on Instagram, because I told you I don't know how to work this shit now. It. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so when people say, Mo, I DM'd you, and I be checking it, and I respond six months later, and they send back LOL, I sent you this last year. Well, shit, I just figured it out. Well, I'll tell you what. I'll send you the information on Twitter. If you want to get me, I'm, I'm the Mo Factor, Mo Duncan, but we, we most definitely want to have you in Sydney on the uh, Judge Joe Brown podcast show. We appreciate all things you got to do is just call in. Oh, baby, send it to me on Twitter because I know how to get right to that. Okay, I'm going to send you a... Uh, God bless you and send it, man. Y'all keep doing your thing, baby. We send love you, good. baby. Thank you. All right. All right, sweetness. Okay, so I'm going to try to get through, the, through this before the phone rings again. Okay? Charlie Johnson. Daddy, you know. Okay. Hey, I got it. Okay, so I go to L.A. and we're doing promotions for the SLS in Vegas for the residency. Talk. Hey, this is Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you calling from? Hi, my name is Nylee Dixon. Welcome to Tacoma, Florida. Hi, baby. Talk to us. Talk to us. I just like to say that I love you so much. You're such an inspiration. <laughs> Thank you, baby. Thank you. I guess that's all Bless she really heart. had to say. Bless that's that it. baby. Come on. Bless that baby. Okay, so go to L.A. But my sister, stop answering the phone until you get finished what you got to say. Baby, shit, okay. So we're doing promotions for the residency in Vegas. Monique does Vegas. And I go to my brother's show, the Steve Harvey show. Steve Harvey and I, like I said, we've been knowing each other for over 25 years. And we had a very real an honest conversation. And it was, I think, one of those kind of conversations that may have taken some people off guard because they were really seeing a brother and a sister really talk. And the way Steve Harvey and I have always got down, baby, from the time we met, I've always threatened Steve Harvey with a kick, a bang, a smack, a push, a shove, out of brother and sisterly love. So when I went on the Steve Harvey show, it was no different. <laughs> it was no different, baby. My brother got to talking up on me. I talk up on him back and I said, he said, Mo, I will sit here and argue with you. And I said, we're not arguing. We are brother and sister talking and mommy and daddy just happened not to be here. And you keep talking. And I did not tell that man I was going to slap him. Tell him what you said. I said, I'm going to punch you in your mouth. Damn. That's what I said. I ain't no Biggest slap, thing, bitch. Bro. I'm a punch. I said, I'm going to punch you on your face. Now, that's how me and Steve Harvey has always gotten down. Always. So by the time I, my flight lands, 
<laughs> in Vegas, it's an uproar. What the fuck, though? Where the love go? Five, four, three, two. I let right, one go. go. What the hell? Come on. So when the plane lands, baby, it is shit everywhere. Monique threatens to slap Steve Harvey. Steve, uh, Monique's husband was going to come out the back, and they were going to fight. Now, Sydney was where, daddy? In Atlanta, Georgia. And so not unless it was another nigga that I don't know nothing about, but he was going to jump out the back. Now we fight. It got so big and so crazy that when me and Steve talked, we both bust out laughing. He said, Mo, they got you slapping me all in my face. And what they don't know about you, Mo, <laughs> he said, you a bang, a nigga. You ain't slapping. I said, so we laughed about it. But for all of the comments and the opinions that were given before anybody knew what was happening. Anybody knew what was happening. Baby, if y'all could read some of the comments on my Instagram, I need to stay in my place and I need help, I need counseling. It was just, and I had to keep laughing at it because I said, y'all, we just believe everything we hear. And that's the reason why we came up with this. What do you do when the room is about you Especially when it's not true. Because when it's true, it don't seem like a room. If somebody told the truth about you, you got to eat that one. Whatever it is, you, you <laughs> own it. Some of, I, I got, some of us got some true rumors. You got to eat it. But when it's not true, what do you do? You see that light blinking? We're going to get to it. Oh. Hey, you own Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? Hey, Monique. This is Elizabeth. Hey, Elizabeth. I'm calling from Austin, Texas, and I, I hope I don't have feedback going. I have to come. But I appreciate this always question. Speaking whatever that is your truth. People can't stand it. I love it. Even if I don't agree with whatever you add on the situation, I love it. Own it. And you don't back down and you don't apologize. It makes me stronger as a woman. Mm. Come on now. We appreciate that. Thank you, baby. We're going to keep on making each other stronger. I'm sorry. I said we're going to keep on making each other stronger. Yes, yes. But, you know, if I could afford to go to Vegas, I would truly go to see you. And if you come out... Oh, bless her heart. Her phone is doing something different. We love you, Mom, if you're still watching. Your phone was doing something different. That's it. What do you do when the rumors are about you? What do you do? And then you hear Wendy. You hear all of these outlets. <laughs> oh, they carried on. They, 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 they carry on. And what's interesting is, and I don't know if I, I maybe digress, go off the beaten path a little bit. But Wendy, when you hear her, you almost have to put your arm around her. Yes. And you can't even be mad at her when she starts talking. Because when she starts talking, she forgets that she's living in this thing called life, too. Because I believe she was the one saying things in reference to being in an open relationship and there's no way and it's terrible and I couldn't. But if I'm not mistaken, and maybe I'm wrong, they said there's a new baby on the way and it ain't by her? Baby, that's what they're saying, but, you know, we don't know. We don't know. We don't know. We don't know. <clears throat> but what happens is when you're living in life and you seem to enjoy taking shots at people when you think they're at their lowest point, Come on. somehow those things get turned around. When you see a person's eyes get bigger than they normally seem to be, ever so respectfully, and then they black out and mm. fall down. This is not shade. This is not laughing. Because again, we I'm 965 years old. Can't be drawing shade it's and all honesty. of that. But you got to say these things begin to wear down on people. So these this is what can happen when the rumors that are put out you on you are not true. But also when you are too fearful to, to say what is true, despite the fact that it's not the most popular thing to say. Come on, y'all. What do you do when the rumors are about you? Hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? 
Hey, my name is Sunshine, and I'm with DPS Radio here in Columbus, Ohio. Hey, Sunshine. What's that? Hi, I, I just want to tell you, first of all, that I love you so much. I've followed your comedy since you started, mm. and I think that one of the problems that you are running into, and it's not really a problem for you, it's a problem for people who can't handle you. Mm-hmm. The problem is, is that our people, black people, they've lost sight of who we are. And they're, they're not worried about black anymore. They're worried about green. Mm-hmm. Say it again. And so now everybody has a price. Come on, baby. Say it again. Say it again. Integrity. They're willing to do whatever. They're willing to be able to be talked about. They're willing to be drugged around the country. When you said you didn't want to do a promo tour and you wanted to spend time with your family, that should have been honored. But it wasn't. They wanted you to be a workhorse, and they didn't appreciate you. But you spoke truth to power, and you went on about your way. And that's why they hate you. You are always going to be labeled as the enemy. They are always going to come for you because you are someone that they're scared of because you're someone that they can't buy. Mm. Come on now. We love you, baby. Appreciate it. We love you, and I hope you make your way to Columbus, Ohio soon. Come back this way, and just know that while everybody agrees, a lot of us, well, you know, you are, are well-loved, and we see you, and, and I hope our young people see you. And so we're, we, you know, get some more young people who can't be bought in the future instead of what we're seeing now, because it is bad for our people. So keep raising the bar. Thank you so much, sweet sister. You are most welcome. Okay, my baby. That's why you do it. That's why you do it. What do you do when the rumors are about you and they're not true? Hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you calling from? Um, Chicago, Illinois. Hey, baby. <laughs> hey, Mo, how you doing? Wonderful, Grandpa Jenkins. How you doing? Sir. Hey, 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 what's happening now? Hey, how you doing, Sid? Let, let me talk to you. I want to talk to you, Sid. Hey, Sid, let me tell you this. What do you do when somebody has a rumor about you? Hey, listen, I'm going to say what you say. Damn them. Damn them. <laughs> you know what? I'm so damn tired of Hollywood talking about Monique. Grandpa Jenkins to cussing. Wait a minute. Grandpa Jenkins, wait. Grandpa Jenkins, I need you to calm down, baby, now. I'm mad. I'm mad. I don't. Take care, brother. Oh, baby. What do you do when the rumors are about you? And also, there's another one we might as well address since it's out there. Well, let's address it. We were were talking about uh, you've been hit up in reference about what did you mean in reference to Whoopi being the help? Oh, can we please address that? We got to. We've got to address it because... People and, and and let me let me say this. If our grown asses don't grow up, 
People kill me with this throwing shade shit. Oh, you th It's like, y'all, we, we, we got to check homework. We getting ready for baseball season. Come on. Y'all talking about throwing shade. It's like, but then you understand the people that say shit like that, you understand what kind of life they live in. So when I spoke about Whoopi Goldberg, I did an interview and a young man asked me in the interview, did you and Whoopi have a private conversation, oh, sir? Pick that book. Which one, Daddy? Off the top. The oh, green. Okay. No. Daddy. Oh, okay, Daddy. So the young brother says, did you and Whoopi have a private conversation offline? Because it seems like a lot was said from her publicly. And I said, you know what? Yes, we did, brother. And when Whoopi Goldberg said to me, <clears throat> Monique, you need to let it go. You need to move forward. People just want to know what you're doing next. And I said, Whoopi, I cannot let it go. Because if I let it go, the little girl that comes behind me, she going to have to deal with the same shit. And Whoopi Goldberg looked at me and said, you better stop worrying about that little girl who's not here yet and worry about you. And as I said in that article, I'm saying again today, at that moment, I knew I was looking at a black woman who was not worried about me because out of fear, she was talking to me out of love, but fear was all over it because what she was trying to educate me on was working for free. And then when Whoopi Goldberg says to me what she makes from the view, I'm looking at my sister saying, God damn it, I got to fight for you too. Because our legend, and our icon, who was named Whoopi Goldberg. Is not being treated fairly. Is not being treated fairly. And you were there on the what anniversary? The 10th year anniversary of Whoopi Goldberg being on that show. So when people jumped off, especially the black women. See, this is the part of me that... I'm thankful for my husband because had I not had this man, that's the part of me who would say, bitch, are you crazy? And you on TV talking about she throwing shade and she doing this, bitch, are you crazy? Because y'all know what I'm saying is the truth. Y'all know what I'm saying is the truth. So no, I'm not throwing shade when I said my sister Whoopi Goldberg has always been the help. And I was not saying that to throw shade. I was not saying that to be disrespectful. I love that woman. I was saying that because when I know our private conversations, and I'm saying, sister, you're not being treated fairly. And there's an old saying in the Hindu religion, there can be no creation without destruction. And you cannot create a climate of equality unless you destroy the mindset of inequality. And oftentimes you hear people that are being treated unfairly fighting for the master, mm. not realizing that they're being enslaved. And when you have a, a gentleman, what was his name? Is it Northam? Northam up in, well, down in uh, Virginia, up from us, I guess now. But mm. up in Virginia, who allegedly was part of either dressing in the Klan or blackface, one or the other. And then he comes back and says, well, that wasn't me, but I confused it because I dressed in blackface uh, impersonating Michael Jackson. And they are looking to get this man out of office. We must remember our sister, Whoopi Goldberg, who's talking about schooling Monique about not working or rather working for free is that same woman who said it was just a joke when Ted Danson dressed in blackface. So there's a level of stance that we're fearful of taking when we're fighting for our rights. But when you have somebody that is privileged, and it's not to say Ted Danson is a bad man by any means, shape or form. It's just to say, whoopee. And I don't know if it's true, but I, I'm, I, I, was under the impression that they may have been dating during that time. But if that's true, pull your man up or pull your friend up and say, that's not how you want to do. Because 
why do you call yourself Whoopi Goldberg and not by your real name? And one would ask, because you've got to find a way to have a name that would be ambiguous to your color. So in order for you to make it, you know the perils, you know the trials, you know the tribulations associated with just being a person of color. So when you have a person of color fighting for people of color, especially women, why not fight with them as opposed to against them? So when those hits were coming in about how dare Monique do that, I was accepting of them because I just knew y'all didn't know. And that's how come I have to understand now. I don't take it personally. Y'all just don't know it. And because you don't know it, we've been so conditioned to go against one another that we feel more comfortable going against one another than standing with each other. I'm not saying no shit, y'all, that, that is so untrue. Untru that is untrue. And you know what, though, Daddy? I want to comment on that, that guy that was in blackface. The, the, the Virginia guy. If people own up to that shit, had that cat said, you know what, y'all, that was a time in my life that I thought that way. There was a time in my life I may not have thought that way. I was just being stupid. That I, you know what? I was that was so dumb of me. And please let me apologize. But because we have a hard time owning shit, that's when it gets confusing. And that's when it gets mucky in the waters because you don't want to own it. But y'all, if people come back and say, listen, I messed that one up. I judged it wrong. I called it wrong. And I apologize. And we give people the opportunity to apologize. That's why we came out with the audio of Tyler Perry saying what he said. Now, understand the double standards that when you heard Dame Dash step to, and you saw Dame Dash step to Lee, he did the manly thing. Because you saw Lee crumble, become a child, but most importantly, you heard him admit that he owed that man that money. You heard Tyler Perry on the audio say that Monique was not wrong for taking the position that she had taken, and ironically... Whoopi Goldberg was in a movie that Tyler Perry was doing when she said that to Monique. So you then begin to ask how, ask the woman who said, I could have schooled you. How do you school someone when the man that you were working for and that was a part of that untruth regarding Monique said, you weren't wrong. So these are the things and all they have to do. And this is why we put it out because we didn't want it to be a rumor. Mm -mm. We wanted you to know that what we were saying was not just something we made up. It was something that we were dealing with. And when you had the video camera of the culprits, it just seems a little uh, bizarre that one would accuse the victim of treating the culprit of the crime as wrong for filming or audio taping them admitting to the fact that they were wrong. And had he just simply said, you know what? And came out to the world and apologized like he said and said he was wrong because he said on part of the audio that no one heard, I'm not going to bring Oprah. I'm not going to bring Lee into it. I'm going to just own what I did. Well, that's commendable. But what's not commendable is when you don't do that. And had he done that, the world would have never known that there was an audio tape in the first place. We are so, and let me, no, let me stop that. Because there are so many brothers and sisters of all colors that have been coming up to me saying, Monique, we standing with y'all. We love your husband. We standing of all colors. But for the ones who said to me, you need to sit down and shut up and be quiet. For the ones that went on the air and spoke their opinions of me, and these were people that were my friends. And my husband said to me, Mama, the truth will only go away if we stop talking about it. So we're going to keep talking about it. 
And now what begins to happen is when you hear about Octavia Spencer and how LeBron had to step in and say, no, 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 y'all got to play it fairly. What I was... Uh, in addition to the, the, the sister who was the actress who was working with Octavia Spencer who did the same Jess thing. Jessica Chastain had to step in. Now, no one has questioned who? who her representation is. No one has said who's representing Sister Octavia that other people have to step in to get our sister equality. And the reason why they're not going to say anything from the standpoint of the agent or the representation is because, as we were told years ago, talent comes and goes. Come on. But the business relationships of these production companies, they are here to stay. So we've got to maintain those relationships so you have people that will represent you and let you starve, suffer, get mistreated because they do not want to have their relationships affected. Now, I don't know them specifically, and I'm speaking from a broad brush standpoint, but when you ridicule someone for saying, you know what, on behalf of my client, since you Lionsgate, since you Tyler Perry, since you Oprah Winfrey, don't have any contractual obligation or contractual agreement with Monique, and her only contractual agreement was signed to Lee Daniels Entertainment, in which she fulfilled all of her obligations. Ricky the ask that you are asking, we're gonna have to respectfully decline. Hit message. Yes, sir. And we're gonna have to respectfully decline. And at that point, that's when we were in the Smucker's Jelly commercial where they said, oh, Lord, he said, would you please pass the jelly in the <laughs> Smucker's? Mm -hmm. And in actuality, all we said was, you're not going to get this black woman for free to travel thousands of miles for you, get nothing in return other than a pat on the head. Thanks for doing that. But what am I? Come on. What they say, you ruining my career. I'm ruining her career. You're ruining, you're throwing it away. I'm throwing it away because I won't tell Monique, why don't you do the song and dance for the man? Come on. Why don't you do the song and dance? Because someone just said a moment ago, Oprah was Jesus. She could have helped y'all. The problem is Oprah is not Jesus. By far. The problem is people have disillusioned themselves and... Perhaps she has as well with being under the impression that what she is is an incredibly talented person who has the, the ability to host a show and that did extremely well at the Oprah Winfrey show. But to put her in the realm of Jesus, mm. when you hear an individual say, as we spoke about a week or two or so ago in reference to romance and she put on a negligee, and Stedman looked at her like, what are you doing? So she'd rather have what? Cornbread and black eyed peas. Then entertain that. One would say, well, how can a person like that tell you about romance and love? If they rather have cornbread and black eyed peas over a night of passion, because I'm going to tell you one thing about it. If my mama right here dress up in a negligee. Talk on it. In a negligee. In a negligee. <laughs> what we going to do. We ain't going to throw the cornbread and black eyed peas away. We not. But we're going to have it after. We're going to get that first. We done had an interaction with mm. one another first Talk and on foremost. It. So <laughs> this is where we coming from on Monique and Sydney's open relationship. The place where we're going to have an open conversation with folks that are not perfect. If you come here, come please, on. please don't be perfect. Don't wear your Sunday best. When you come to Monique and Sydney's open relationship. No. Nope. Wear your comfortable shit. This ain't the opera. No. Nope. This is a barbecue. That's all. This a cookout. That's it. That's all. Now, we might have some veggie burgers. We might. But other than that. We got beef burgers, too, because everybody ain't going to want the veggie burgers. And we're going to have some Aste. Spumante. Come on now, baby. Come on. That's what we had at our wedding, Let's know. open the line. Let's do folks. Let's do it. Well, daddy, I got to how to work it. Yes. Hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? Hit the whole button again. Daddy, I did. No, hit the whole, the third one. 
Bogus. Yes. Now hit that speaker. I did. Now hit it again. So you gotta disc you gotta take that green there we oh. go. Now it's open. Now the green button is open. Hey, you so open. somebody wants to call. That's not it. Nobody oh daddy, because I love. now we got mask open. Now you see it. So one day, my loves, this this show is going to be all over the world, and we'll have someone that does this, okay? <laughs> hey, you're on with Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? Hi, this is Gabrielle. How are you? Wonderful, baby. How you doing? I'm doing good. So, I see you guys' titles. Your title, uh, what do you do when the rumors are about you? Yes. And I just wanted to say, like, I've been there before. Of course, I'm not a celebrity or anything, but here in this small town where everybody knows everybody, like, I've been there before where a bunch of people had against me for speaking the truth. Mm -hmm. And I'm telling you, like, every time I see you on any type of platform, it really helps me to just stay true to who I am because I know that you're fighting, like, a battle so much greater than what I'm fighting. Mm -hmm. And I really feel like you and your husband are, like, the only real people, and I'm just being for real, like, the only real people, like, on TV or on the Internet. Because it seems like most people on TV are just unreliable. And I just really appreciate you staying real because, like, you helped me so much. Like, the way you handle yourself against millions and millions of people like, I love it, and it just inspires me to continue to go on because I'm just fighting, like, a good maybe 50, 100 people. <laughs> and it's just, it's, it's unbelievable to me the way you carry yourself. And I love, I love you guys' dynamic. Like, so I just really want to tell you, like, I've been there, you know, in a much smaller, you know, situation. But thank you for, you know, Continue to stay real and continue to fight for, you know, what's really right. Thank you, my sweet sister. We're going to keep standing together, baby. Come on now. Thank you. We Thank love you, honey. <laughs> Thank you. I love you guys. Thank love you, baby. baby. And when you hear that, it's like it's worth just hit the third the button again and leave it on hold. There you go. Boom. <laughs> When you keep hearing that or hearing things like that, it allows you to get through all of the naysayers. Because when you're dealing with people who can appreciate that you're telling the truth, when you're dealing with people like a Oprah Winfrey, they're the king of the mountain, but mm -hmm. they're not coming out because they say sometimes you've got to be the light. But sometimes people who consider themselves the light don't want to have things illuminating them and who they really are. Mm. And it's by no means that she's a bad person. She's done too many incredible things to be a bad person. Yes. She's someone that we in our community probably have all looked up to at some point in time. But there's an old saying that sometimes that there is a point in time when the student becomes the teacher. And sometimes, you know, it's kind of like when our parents get older and there's certain things that they taught us that we now have to reteach them because mm -hmm. they slip in a little bit. They forgot what they taught us. As time will do to us with our children if we taught them the right way. So we say it lovingly with Oprah. And again, we're not trying to call anyone out. We're trying to call them up because the moment they would be willing to have a real conversation, they don't understand when you have people calling you Jesus, the magnitude of love, the magnitude of forgiveness, but letting them know that I'm not Jesus and that I too can make a mistake and a sister named Oprah Winfrey. I can make a mistake and when I make that mistake, I'm big enough to own it. And there's no way that I'm going to sit back and let a black woman who at one time she looked at Monique and say, when I see you, I'm looking right at myself. So what I would say to Oprah Winfrey, if by some chance you stumble upon our humble little podcast, that you say, when you look at yourself, would you want someone to sit back and not tell the truth about the fact that you were right when everyone else is saying you were wrong 
and your voice has a lot of weight in this community. I've seen you stand up for situations when it was predominantly white women who were involved with the situation, but I've really never seen you stand up specifically for the voices of black women. You've done wonderful things in Africa as it pertains to schools and things of that, so I don't want to discount that. But when we get to talking about the women that are here, the, the Octavia Spencers, when you talk about the Viola Davises, who they are our sisters, and she, they call her the what? Black Meryl Street? Mm -hmm. When you have the Moniques, where's your voice at? Where's your voice? And last point, I just find it ironic in this small community that there was a show on The View where Oprah Winfrey and Whoopi Goldberg were on after not speaking for 20 years. How does that happen? So we got to speak out about it because that's the only way the healing process is going to begin. This is not trying to knock somebody down. It's about trying to lift folks up. And that's, that's exactly what it is. So when I see some of the comments, and one of the comments was, you trying to, what, you trying to fuck Whoopi Goldberg up? No, baby. By no means. Because that is our sister. That's our sister. But to know, to know and not say nothing, well, we keep on, we'll be keep, Keep me in face with it over and over and over and over again. So if you're not tired, that's totally up to you. But we're tired. And then what happens is when you have the sisters that's saying, oh, how dare you? How dare you? What are you teaching your damn daughters? And when you say that you're trying to fuck Whoopi Goldberg up by telling the world, that she's being paid unfairly based upon being on a show for 10 years, based upon being an Academy Award, her body of work is something to be revered. Yes. If she was a white woman, she would be one of the highest paid women on TV. In my humble opinion. So to be underpaid, and this black woman is sitting here saying you're being underpaid. This is the reason why I'm speaking up. But you must understand, because I've also seen comments of, of why do you have your husband there? Mm. Why? Because what happens is our people, and by our people, I mean every people that can connect with being mistreated, being felt as if they were unequal. And I don't care if you're white. I don't care if you're black, transgender, lesbian, gay, short, tall, whatever it is, everyone has some experience with being undervalued to some degree. And if you are part of that group, you are our people. Mm. All I would ask is, wouldn't you love for someone to be able to speak up on your behalf or stand alongside of you? Because if you have a mate, what kind of mate do you have if they won't stand by you and they're going to tell you to go on the side of the people who are oppressing your family? So I look at it this way, humbly. I'd rather stand up and get crushed together with this woman mm. than to sit down and hope and hope that they, they give us a chance, they, they, that, they, that they cause on us. I, I want them to cause on us because if, if, if we do right, they might just cause on us tea cake. Tea cake. Hey, I, I was thinking of the slavest name Maybe they're, they're cold on us. And what happens is when you have billionaires or alleged billionaires that are afraid to speak up, when you have a Tyler Perry say, I think out of the box. See, I played by their rules. I knew what they would give me initially wasn't right, but I played by their rules. This is what allows us to look as if we're difficult because they'll say, didn't you know that Tyler Perry played by our rules? Come on. Why, what, what, what makes you and all of your blackness, I don't know why I felt like this, this to be, <laughs> Baby, and all of your blackness. He came. All of it. How you doing? Hey. Talk to him. And all of your blackness and you and your coon husband. Wait. Wait a minute. 
Why? What gives you two the gumption to stand up? Because you're making it difficult. Mm. And all we're saying is we're trying to make it better. That's all. That's all. So for the shots that some folks take, we just know that you don't know. That's all. We just know that you don't know. Now, there was a time, like I said earlier, I'd have took that shit personal. And I'd have been ready, baby. But now it's like, y'all, we can't take it personal because when you have the younger babies calling, our little sisters, you got the sisters my age saying, hey, Mo, you got the older sisters and brothers and young brothers saying, hey, we standing. We standing. That lets us know we saying something right. And for the ones who are not in the position right now to understand it, once you go through it, you'll then get it. I hope you won't be enslaved till you leave here. Because I know some folks that left here still enslaved, still waiting to get to Jesus. Don't worry, I'm going to suffer here. I'm going to suffer. It's about that suffering. Oh, but when I meet Jesus, well, <laughs> listen, we're trying to meet it right now. Enjoy it right now. And as we say what we say, it's with the understanding that the position that Whoopi takes, the position that Brother Steve Harvey takes, uh, Sister Oprah, Tyler, you must understand the positions that they're taking is not because they're terrible people. It's because we've been conditioned in this society for so long that the powers that be are always going to be the powers that be. And if you cannot beat them, what should you do? Join them. Join them. But we are of the mindset that the only way that you are going to have change is if you stand up when change needs to be implemented. Yes. And at this moment in our society, change needs to be implemented. And humbly, I'll say that there's some folks in this business that don't buy into it. Mm. There's some folks in this business that ironically we've run into that are Caucasian that have more balls Come on. than people who are of African-American scent that we just named because they're saying they're disillusioned. There are people out there that in, um, in the midst of all the unfairness that's taking place, we're now running into people that are finding us and are saying, we want to play fair. Come on. We heard what you're saying. Because as we've heard, and I, you may have heard this too in our community, what doesn't a closed mouth get? Fed. So we got to speak up and open our mouths. And you know what that is? This is a little bit off book, but I want to address somebody's comment. Go on. Right? And when somebody put in the comment, shut up, husband. And your your handle name is, is that of a woman. So it appears in the pictures that of a woman. Here's why we've been so messed over and beat up mentally, spiritually, sometimes physically, because, and I say this humbly, but I'm going to say it for sisters like you. When we watch for years, a woman who said marriage is not what I want, and that's her right and her choice. That is her right and her choice. But subliminally, what that message was saying was, you don't need a man. Because I get questioned too many times. Why is your husband there? And you know sometimes when the bubble come up in your head, I want to say, bitch, why is yours not? But I can't because I'm growing. <laughs> okay, daddy? She's growing. I'm growing. And, you know, and, and I'm, I'm maturing. But come on. I want y'all to know the bubble do be there sometimes. But we've been so conditioned to watching this woman do it by herself. Do it by herself. Not with her what husband. Woman? Her name is Oprah Winfrey. Oh, okay, okay. And some might call her uh, Sophia. Some might call her Jesus. So, hey, she baby, has many names. Kim Whitley refers to her as her God. Okay. But we watched her for so long. That now when you have your husband by your side, we as black women are questioning, why do we have our men by our side? Don't you know he could hinder your career? And it's, I'm looking at us saying, are we stupid? 
Have we been that poisoned by looking at somebody's stuff? By looking at a mansion, a yacht, a private plane? You're looking at a whole bunch of shit. But what else are you seeing? But we want to chase that so bad that you would say, oh, shut up, husband. And Monique, why is your husband there? Let me tell you something. He's here. Because I'm grateful that the universe said he needs to be there. He needs to be there. Because had he not been here, you may be getting a different Monique. You may get a Monique that's not even here. That's what path I was going on, even with my health. So I don't take it personal when you say it, but I want to address it because it makes me have empathy and sympathy for the black women who don't believe or think they need their black man by their side. Now for the sisters who say, Monique, I like women, bitch, listen. Who don't believe they need someone by their side. And it's not specific to your color. Come on, Daddy. But what happens is in our community, we again have been taught watching someone like an Oprah Winfrey, who you see her dogs in pictures more than you see her man Stedman. And it's not that she can't be single. But when you hear her put a level of importance on being married to Jennifer Hudson in her interview, when she had only been, I guess, dating the gentleman she was with for two years, well, mm -hmm. when are you going to get married? Well, that's a bizarre question to somebody who has been dating a man, I believe it was a week or two after Jesus was put on the cross. Super Soul Sunday. Super Soul Sunday. <laughs> Super Soul Sunday. So you begin to say, how do you ask that question? when your situation is what it is. But what happens is when you're able to ask that question, it almost appears if you, as you believe yourself not to somehow be in the same category of humanity that we ordinary, ordinary mortals are in. You know, this past weekend at the show in Vegas, right? Uh, there were some sisters sitting up front and three were married and one was not. Mm -hmm. And the three that were married had a, like, bitch, I'm married. And the other sister, when I start talking about being a boss bitch, she perked up. Like, yes, that's what I am. I said, and bitch, that's why you by yourself. Now, her girlfriends almost looked at me like, bitch, we was trying to say it, but we ain't know how to break it down to her because that's our girl. But we want to appreciate the realness because, y'all, we getting caught in foolishness. And are we watching the stories? Are we watching the lessons? Like, are we paying attention that when you hear about a lot of billionaires, I won't say all because I don't know all of them, but a lot of them, they seem to die lonely. They seem to be by themselves when it's all said and done. We watched this, was it on Johnny Carson? Mm -hmm. Johnny Carson. No one, they said, was there. And he was known as the god daddy of television. Worth $400 million. By himself. Hey, this is Monique and Sydney. Who's this and where you're calling from? Oh, baby, you got to try us back. The line is really bad. I'm so sorry, my sweetnesses, but that line was really bad. So if you're watching, try another connection because that was really staticky. But he was worth $400 million. Yes. And they said at the end, not even his third wife was by his side when he died. That was the one he was married to. Yeah. Hey, you on with Monique and Sydney? Who's this and where you're calling from? Well, what a surprise I got through. I'm so happy. This is Scott. I'm calling from New York. Hey, Scott. Hey, Scott. <laughs> Listen, the first thing I want to say is congratulations to the two of you for sticking through this with love, inspiration. Really, you're just stating facts. I don't ever get a sense of hatred. And this stuff going on now with Ms. Goldberg, I thought it was inappropriate to kind of say I could school you on national TV. You know, when you have a situation like that, she should have took you to the side and maybe said it. It wasn't very respectful. So I understand your frustration. You got my respect, Ms. Monique, mm -hmm. <clears throat> excuse me, when you went on the breakfast club and set that young man straight for calling you donkey of the day. Yes. <clears throat> with your resume, you are far from anything like a donkey. You are an inspiration. Please keep your humor. Don't give up the stand because the stand is powerful. And what I have to say about Mr. Sidney is this. 
The women who don't like him are jealous of it and of you. Mm. God bless you both, and I hope you, this comes out something positive from all this. You deserve it. Thank you, Brother Scott. Thank you. Thank you. Love Take you, care, honey. Now. Okay, Bye-bye. my baby. Come on. So, when you get when you get folks calling in, and he sounds like one of the wiser people in the sector of our community. Wiser mm-hmm. in the sense that he's lived a while. That's what keeps us going. That's what's keeping us going. And when you're dealing with people of all ages, of all colors, of all ethnicities, of all different types of sexualities, but the one thing they have in, in common is a spirit of fairness. Mm-hmm. So there's not a feeling that we are being unfair when Monique says what they're giving Whoopi Goldberg based upon what they said was unfair because when you said that I can school you, well, it, it's fair game now. It's fair game to have a conversation to understand that how can someone school you when they're getting paid mm, unfairly to a degree. <laughs> Okay, y'all. But now, because I want to say it, I know so bad, but we're not. Because the thing is, in my humble opinion, in saying it, it's not to embarrass her. No, it should embarrass the network. Yes, and allow people to understand how unfair that that is. And maybe, just maybe, through saying it, they'll have a conversation with her and say, "Let's make it right." She don't ever have to say they made it right. But inside, it makes us feel good if they did make it right because she deserves to be treated correctly. See, y'all? That's why I'm grateful that I have him. Because it ain't just about his wife being right. It's about the right thing, period. It's about the right thing, period. And... Have I always been right? Hell no. Have I been out of pocket, out of line, out of tune? Hell yes. But I had a friend by my side that said, let me talk to you. Let's let's talk this through. Let's work this through. So I'm off page for a second, but I'm saying this to the ones that when you question why is whomever was there, why are they there? Why? Because that's who you with, baby. That's who you're saying, I want to spend the rest of my life with this person, but I want to trust my life to someone else? That just doesn't make sense to me. I'm there for the money, baby. When I had a manager that looked at me and my husband in his office and said to me and my husband, y'all just do the sexy stuff. We'll We'll take care of you. And my husband looked at that man and said, you tell me what man takes care of you and your family. I don't need you to take care of me and my family. We just need you to do your job. Right. Now, at that moment, sisters, that's that's one of the moments where you know you're going to give your husband a special treat. Because that's, that's it right there. And and they asked, somebody had said, I'm, I'm, Sydney is there for the money. And... <laughs> <laughs> No, 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 no. And the thing is, and I like to address it. Go ahead, Daddy. Because they're telling the truth. Because you've been rich since you were 14. Come on. Okay? Come on. Mansions, yachts. Had all, all of, the shit. All of it since you were 14. All of it. And that's how long we've been best friends since we were 14. And now we're 51 years old. Come on. Okay? We'll be 52 this year. Come on. So what happens is, once again... With the rumors, what do you do when they address at you? You take them, you appreciate them, and you understand that the people who often spew them and try to fill your head with their hate is because they're empty inside. Mm-hmm. And for that, you can't be angry at them. You got to have a little empathy for them. And that's what we have as we move on. But baby. Yes, daddy. It seems to be about that time. Oh, it's about that time for us to say we mow and sit and we do it our way. 